I'm very happy to be here with you all to share about Bhutanese musical culture. And before I begin my real talk on music, may I sing for you? Yes. Thank you very much. The song is called The Orphan. It is written in King dialect. And it is from my two experience. When I was nine years old, I lost my mom. At 15, I composed this song dedicated to my beloved mother. I sing about an eagle who represents the spirit that takes my mother away from me. musical instrument that I'm playing is called the Tanyan, or Bhutanese lute in English. It is one of the prominent musical instruments in Bhutan. Traditional music matters because it is true music and dance that people fully learn and experience with their whole mind, heart, and body what it is to be Bhutanese. By participating in music from childhood to old age, Bhutanese experience very strong spiritual and cultural values. We experience how we relate to nature, how we relate to the community, how we relate to the world and cosmos. All these things that make us, at our core, deeply Bhutanese, become reality through music and dance. <laughs> Shola <laughs> 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 
Music and dance reach us through multiple channels, penetrating every aspect of our being. It is like it has become part of Bhutanese DNA. Music and dance throughout Bhutan not only share many common traits and values, but also it differs according to the local language and ways of life. People learn not only what it is to be a Bhutanese through music and dance, but also what it means to be a live villager or a villager of lower king. What we know and experience by participating in traditional music and dance cannot be taught in this deeply felt ways through any other means. Not by book, not by teacher, or by a video screen. Experiencing and preservation of our culture is one of the four essential pillars of Bhutan's philosophy, Gianna's gross national happiness. Promoting a contentment and a peace in the country is directly related to keeping a cultural traditions vital, including the music and dance. This is why I and my colleagues at Music of Bhutan Research Center are working so hard to document and research ancient music and folk dance of Bhutan, which has been passed on orally from generation to generation. And it is in danger of disappearing. There is no written notation for Bhutanese music. Since 2008 and racing against the time, we have established an archive for traditional music and dance materials in the capital. We also started to document songs and associated rituals of a remote village festivals. We also brought elder masters and traditional music to the public attention by producing book and CDs. And we also organized reunion of 26 surviving master dancers from 1960s, caught off the third king. We also instigated the annual Duke Nobu Award for lifetime achievement in traditional music. Recently, just less than a month ago, we produced a Bhutanese folk music festival in the center of Thimpu, and it has been free to the public. Some context, traditional music and dance may be changing in Bhutan, but even in this time of transition, Bhutanese music remains relevant and can still continue to teach us who we have been for centuries and who we still are. Strongly grounded in Bhutanese identity, even as we navigate new waters of modernization. We have a video clip of a young singer with a dance tube and very talented 12-year-old singer who participated in our uh, Bhutanese Folk Music Festival. They portray a timelessness and magnificence of a unique and vital musical culture, and I strongly hope for the future. Yeah.
I will sing about the Dranian, the musical instrument. This song tells about if you want to be a good Dranianist, and one should get blessings from the goddess of music, Pamuyang Chenma, an elderly master Dranianist. For example, Abdopi is one of the greatest Jamnian players in the country. Finally, the heart and mind of Bhutanese music and its people, that is what really matters. Thank you, Antashi Thank you, Antashi Delhi.